Hey guys, this is Billy from AdultChiller.com and today I want to share some of the lesser known recordings that I know and love. This is going to be a video that sort of enriches your adult learner perspective and you know, I think a lot of incredible performances and great players can kind of slip through the cracks. So what you're not going to find on the list today is um, any recordings I recommend from Yo-Yo Ma, Roaster Probridge, Piotr Gorski, kind of the, the Mount Rushmore of well-known incredible cellists. They are incredible and they have tons of amazing recordings, but I want to focus on the ones that I felt kind of like a hidden gem. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I stumbled upon this, this is amazing. So my first offering for you is um, basically the entire box suites, all six suites by Gavriel Lipkind. He's very much alive um, and very much in the peak of his career right now. I believe he's an Israeli cellist and what I find mesmerizing, first off, his tone. He has this kind of ancient old kind of unknown cello like of unknown origins his recording setup that he achieved for this uh, the box suites is just so rich and and what you would want a cello to sound like <laughs> for playing Bach it's so that's first off just it's just like candy for your ears but the thing I really love about it is he takes real liberties with a lot of the repeats in the box suites which it's pretty well known that you know it was kind of almost expected for Baroque players to improvise. If there was a set of repeats on the second time, they would maybe do little impro improvisational turns or, you know, changing the phrase just here and there. Gabriel Lipkin, I think, takes this to the extreme. For me, it's a wonderful thing. There's so many great recordings of the Bach where it's just very straightforward. And I think what he does is so inventive and creative. You know, certain purists of a certain nature might be turned off by it, but I, please give it a shot because I really think he's one of the top players around right now. All right, number two is the Schumann Concerto recorded, and the, the soloist is Daniel Schifron. So, saying lesser known, that maybe is just more my ignorance because I'm very well aware that Schifron was like one of, if not the top three, you know, Russian cellists of the 20th century. So, he was very famous. But as an adult learner who was kind of newer to classical music, I quickly heard of Rosa Provich. It took me a lot longer to find out about Daniel Shafran, and I've always been kind of drawn to his playing. It's so individualistic. I believe he played on an Amati, and it was kind of a smaller cello, so he has really weird fingerings. He uses thumb um, and vibrates on thumb a ton, and uses, like, just very, very individualistic, as is his phrasing and his interpretation. To me, that's wonderful because. I, I want to hear something new, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you've heard the Schumann Concerto a number of times at a certain point, and to hear someone do something that's just, you hear four or five notes, you're like, oh, that's got to be Chiffron. You know, that, that to me is an amazing thing to have such an individualistic um, and still virtuosic playing style. The Schumann, why I want that, because I, I could record, there's a number of his things that I loved. You know, it's well known that Schumann had a lot of mental instability in his life, and I believe that the cello concerto, when I first heard it, I didn't, it wasn't Schumann's version, and I didn't know Schumann or the concerto, it's just cello music, because I was just starting out. And I remember thinking as I heard the, the orchestral part, I was like, oh, this guy's crazy. Like, this is, this is like unstable. Like the, the just the energy and the, the, the part writing and the, the harmony. And I think Chiffron's version plays into that mental anguish, but also, you know, it's kind of a bipolar situation where depressive and then manic. His, his version just to me is like the closest thing I've heard to what I imagine the Schumann should sound like in, in certain ways. It's, it's definitely something to check out. All right, next recording is the Haydn C major cello concerto with Nicholas Alstadt um, as soloist. Alstadt is a, another one who's alive and and very much at the peak of his playing. It, depending on where you're watching from, you might be saying, you know, this guy is famous. For U.S.-based adult learners, he I don't think he concertizes extensively in the U.S. And I definitely had not heard of him. And then I stumbled upon him, and I was like, this guy, this guy's amazing. What I love, first off, his technique is so complete and I feel like he, he embraces a lot of the period playing. You know, you'll see he, he has a, 
a period bow, so it's not like a regular modern bow, but it's it's one that would have been used during Haydn's time. But to me, it's it's not academic. It, it just is like his way of getting even closer to what he thinks the music should sound like. I think he's one of these people, to my eye, that makes cello playing look simple, not easy, but simple because his motions, everything he does is so efficient and it just, everything looks so logical. It's like, well, yeah, that's how the bow arm should look and look at his fingers go. Like he plays at such a virtuosic level, but everything, it almost looks like, yeah, I wonder, you know, and then you, you're like, that, that looks pretty good. And then you realize he's playing it at an incredible tempo and it, but it's just, it, it's so effortless seeming. I think he's a cellist cellist if that makes sense you can appreciate what he's achieved technically and then it's all in the service of his really lovely musical imagination so definitely check that one out too all right this one i'm very excited about because this is to me much further off the beaten path in a sense the soloist i want to talk about is enrico dindo um, who's alive as far as i know and in italy he's an italian soloist and the the piece is the second cello concerto by Nikolai Capustan. Capustan. Um, so let me just first say, Capustan was, uh, I believe he died in 2020, so pretty recently. He was a fascinating Ukrainian uh, composer who really loved jazz and the, I think the harmonic language of jazz. And then he used that and infused it in his classical pieces. So he wrote a, a standard kind of concerto, but it's very kind of jazz infused. Enrico Dindo in this, and I hope I'm saying that right, Dindo. Jazz on cello can be cringy at times for me. It's like you really gotta do it well or it's 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 either great or, or real bad. So I, I think he plays this concerto beautifully, like effortless, the way you imagine a saxophonist playing and you know, they're not shifting and, and you know, their hands can stay still. And I think cello is one of those ones can sound very clunky if the person doesn't have complete mastery of the instrument and they're trying to emulate, you know, kind of jazz style playing. I think Dindo nails it. And I think the concerto is a super like worthy piece for the, the cello, the canonic repertoire of cello playing. And I think it's hopefully something you've never even heard of and it'll just like knock your socks off. And finally, I have a piece that I truly love. I've actually performed it with a couple different flute players. It's by Via Lobos, uh, Hector Via Lobos, the Brazilian composer, and it's called The Jet Whistle. It's for cello and flute. The recording I picked is with Rebecca Rust on cello and Emmanuel Pahud on flute without disparaging Rebecca Rust at all, because she plays great in it. The reason I picked it was Emmanuel Pahud's flute playing is to me like utterly transcendent. I imagine just like a steamboat with the engine off traveling down the Amazon River and you're just hearing these crazy wild bird calls and, and just the sounds of the jungle. It's a really fun piece to play. And Via Lobos is definitely a composer to check out if you haven't. He, he did play cello, so he's written Numerous cello concertos, cello sonatas, I think they're pretty insanely virtuosic and, and maybe not played as much because of how kind of gnarly and hard they are. Um, but he's got, he had a tremendous output. So definitely someone to check out when you have the time. And this recording, I think you should listen to all three movements and just, that that's the image I have. It's just a steamboat going down the Amazon and it's like nighttime and you're just hearing these like the, the sounds of these wild animals calling back and forth. So with that, I will wrap up this list. I really hope you enjoy these. Uh, they've made a big impact on me just in terms of things I, I wanna play in the future, things I wanna sound like. Every player on this list is just such a great player and it's so great for you as an adult learner to hear truly great playing and, and on YouTube for most of these actually see really great cello playing and just take it in, um, enjoy it. If you like this, please subscribe um, and I'll see you next time.